Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf, Chulin Daf Tes. We are holding on the second line off the top of the Amad. V'amar Rabbi Yehuda, he quotes, Amar Rav, Talmud Chacham, it's not enough that he, he's very learned and very proficient on the intellectual side of things. He needs to have hands-on proficiency as well. Tzorach She'ilmoit, Gimel Dvarim, he must practice and become accustomed to being, being an expert, hands-on expert on the following three things. Ksav, knowing how to write, how to sign his name in a document. Some actually say it's talking about the Ksav of Sefer Torah and then you know how to you know, write the, yeah, the Ksav Stam, Sefer Torah Tilom Zuzis. If it should come to a situation where he has to step in and you know, fix something, whatever. Shechita, says Rashi on the fourth line, La'aman Yodei Lukach. To customize himself, to get hands on experience. Even though he's an expert, he learned Mesechah Sul, he knows Yerdea by heart. He needs that hands on ability as well. U Mila, and to do a bris Mila. Rav Chananya Bar Shlamya, he quotes Mishmei the Rav Amar, he has another three to the list. Af Kesha Shot Filin. He needs to be able to handle a Kesha shot tool. <coughs> you know, sometimes you have to make an adjustment, you have to, you know. So he has to know how to uh, tie and untie the Kesha the tool. Rechaz Chasan, listen to this, this is uh, Shevar Brachas. He has to be proficient in Shevar Brachas. The Miri adds to be able to say it properly with uh, a, nice, a nice tune, the way it's said, right? And finally, the tzitzis, how to tie tzitzis. Now, why did uh, the first opinion not list these on the on the list? Because there are mo- these things are more commonly, um, you know, commonly people know these things, so it's not so critical that uh, you know uh, every Talmud Chacham has to be an expert in these things. Because there's enough enough people to go around uh, that would know how to do these things. So we have a tabach. Who was a, a sheikh at slash butcher? Apparently, it was all in one in those days. So if he if he, uh, he doesn't know, he's not an expert in the halachas of of shechita. Also, la echol mishchita, so you can't eat his uh, his meat. Ve'elo in hilchas shechita. What are the halachas? Shehiya, right? Delay, not to take a break in the middle of the act of shechita. Dar not to uh, come down too hard. It has to be with a back and forth. You know, a smooth motion as opposed to just a chop. Chalada. Chalada is like a chulda, like a little rat that hides in it, you know, runs through the holes, runs through, you know, tunnels, burrows through the uh, tunnels. Likewise, the, the knife has to come from the outside and slice through rather than being stuck into the, inserted into the, uh, you know, in between the simonim and sort of chop its way out. Hagrama is, um, when you veer the knife out of the area of the shechita, so you're starting in the right place, but then you veer out beyond the kosher, you know, zone of, of the of the um, of the shechita, the ikar, or if one or uh, or both of the siman were yanked out of their place. So these are critical to the to the shechita process. And if he's not proficient in the um, intricacies of the halachas pertaining to these matters, he can't do shechita. You can't trust him. Michael Mashmal, what's the point of Shmuel teaching this? And we know. Kulu, all these deficiencies, Taninu, have been discussed in the Mishnah, is coming up later in the Mesech. Of course he has to know these things, otherwise it's not, it's not, not talking about. The answer is like, Tzricha must be speaking, Sheshachad lefaneinu, Beis v'gimu pa'amim. What happened was, the, the Sheikhid has already established himself. He has a good reputation. Look, he's done uh, quite a few Shechites in front of us, successful Shechites. Sheshachad Shafar, you know, he did a proper Shechita. Maudetema, perhaps you can think, you know, even though he's not a world expert in the halachas, but the fact is, in terms of hands-on, he must have learned, he must have had some training, and he sees he's doing it okay. Since those, he shechted okay. Perhaps uh, we should assume uh, this one as well was shechted properly. The answer is no. Don't make any assumptions. Given the Gomer, since he hasn't studied in depth the halachas, you know what? Uh, sometimes he might luck out and do it properly, but sometimes he might not realize. Without realizing, Zimnan the Shoyi he might delay, he might uh, 
press, press too hard, without realizing that it's even a problem. So after the Sheikh had checked the Simonim, he has to take a close look at those Simonim to, to ensure that uh, they were shechted properly, that you know, the, most of these Simonim were shechted. There has to be at least a roiv. By a behemoth has to be roiv of both Simonim. So he has to go take a look at the, each simon and, and see whether it was shechted uh, right. Amr of Yasef, af anna namitanina. I will support this halacha from a, a Mishnah. Rabbi Shimon Omer, im shaha. So he relates to the soul called Shehiya, right? Which we said before means that if he takes a break, how long is the break going to be? To invalidate the shechita. Im shaha, kadei bikor, if the break, the pause, was long enough to theoretically do the inspection, then it constitutes an invalid shechit. Now, what type of inspection are we speaking? Apparently, there is a need to make an inspection as part of the process. My lab will assume could they be simon to check the simon. So you see, that's required. I'm like, no, lo yachik amar biyechon the bigu chacham. A different inspection. The time it takes to take the knife, shechit knife to the chacham to the city in a rough to show him the, the knife to inspect it before the shechit. That's the uh, inspection process he's referring to, but not the simon and after the shechit. Says the more, but that, that's difficult to suggest because in Cain, if that's the uh, amount of time you're talking about, it, it's really subjective. It's, it's all relative to whether, you know, if the chacham lives around the corner, it depends if he lives around the block, or around the other side of town. I mean, how could you uh, set that as a... Uh, as a formula, you've presented your words, your halacha is dependent on all kinds of factors which are unknown. You're right. We're speaking about inspecting the knife, but not where it requires you traveling to the chacham, because again, that's an unknown proposition. We're speaking that the tabach himself is a chacham, the shechet himself is the chacham who is going to inspect the knife. And then you know he's right there, he's on site, so. It's a pretty determined, preset amount of time, how long it takes to, to run his finger along the knife. But in any case, Shmuel did tell us, well, we didn't have the right, but Shmuel did, did uh, teach us that you have to check the simonim after shechita. Suppose he didn't. He failed to check the simonim to confirm that they were mostly cut. What's the status of the animal? Certainly you can't eat it until you confirm that it was shechita properly. The question is, is it only forbidden for consumption, or perhaps it's even tummy? Because a non shechted dead animal is, for all practical purposes, an avela, a dead carcass, which is a source of tumma as well. What's the status? Rabbi Lazar, Ben Antignus, Mishum, Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Omar. He says, it's just a trefa. Asur Bachil, you can't eat it. It's like a tray for like an animal which was discovered to be uh, you know injured and it's not a kosher animal for eating, but it's not metame. Masnisa tana. However, in the brayser we learn a step further. Nevelo metame b'masa. It's treated like a dead animal, as though there was no shkita at all, and it's metame even if you just lift it without touching it. It's like a nevelo. What's the machlekes about? Mike Listen to this interesting novel, Lundus. But the Rafuna machlekes revolves around Rafuna. Dam Rafuna. You know, a behemoth during its lifetime is presumed to be, it is, in a state of Isra, right? Because you can't eat a live animal, Eber Menachai, right? So he says that that status remains, it, it retains that status until you know otherwise, until there was a, a status change by way of a proper shechita, a confirmed proper shechita, which in this case you don't have. So it stays Asr. Until it is known to you, meaning it is confirmed to you, by many shchita, how, what, where the shchita occurred. Now, on the other hand, once the shchita occurred, we flip to the other side of the coin. That affects a status change. It is presumed to be mutter, unless you know otherwise. Harei becheskas heter has a heter status. Ad shiyavada lecha amend mitzvah, unless you know that it was a trefa. Basically, you know otherwise. That's the formula that we're working with now. Back to our story. You did shechita, but you failed to check the simanim to confirm the success of the shechita. Mar sabe b'cheskas yisur kaimo. So one shita says, 
Look, if you haven't confirmed the proper shechita, so it retains its original status, its asr, and now that it's dead, it's, it's an avela. A dead animal is an avela. Becheskas isur ka vashtu meisahi. So it's metami. Amar sovar, no, listen to this. Becheskas is suram rinan. Sure. Initially, during its lifetime, it was in an isur status. Okay, just hold on to that status. You can't give it more. <laughs> you want to maintain that status? Fine. So even now, after the shechita, the unconfirmed shechita, fine, consider it to be still asur. But you can't give it a new layer of, of, of uh, deficiencies. I.e. tumor. Yeah, it's going to be free of tumor. Umar asav b'cheskas isra aminan b'cheskas tumor la yamrinan. You can't give it tumor. It's something it didn't have during its lifetime. Very interesting. Goofa, let's go back and review the Allah of Rav Huna. Rav Huna. What's the formula that we're working with? Behema b'chayiha b'cheskas isra imedes, right? Ad sh'yivad l'cha b'menishchato. So during its lifetime it was in a state of isra, unless you know otherwise. On the other hand, if the shechita occurs, nishchato b'chaskas etzer meda changes our outlook. It's presumed to be hetter unless you know otherwise. I shivalach until it's confirmed. Otherwise, we manage it. Now, the second half of the statement. Valema, why did he? Why couldn't he just say nishchato once the shechita occurs? Hutra becomes mutter, plain and simple. Instead of saying, well, after shechita, you presume that it's mutter, unless, you, I mean, that sounds like there's some sort of doubt, some sort of problem here. What problem? How come from the point of what he's teaching us is like this? Even though there is an issue. The Avagavdis Yalad Boreyosa. Once shechita took place, even though there is some sort of new issue, there's a Reyosa, there's a problem, it's still considered kosher unless you know otherwise. Because now it has a cheskas, it acquired a cheskas hetra. What's the example? What's the case of a po- possible deficiency? As was asked by Rabbi Abba from Merafun Bozev Venotob Nemi Ay. Mouth. So a, um, a wolf comes and grabs the intestines of the shechted animal. He shechted, and the animal comes and grabs the intestines. And we know that a punctured intestine renders the animal treifa. That's considered a serious injury, injury which renders the animal treifa, uh, which makes it forbidden. If it was punctured during its lifetime, of course. <laughs> so now the, uh, the animal grabbed the b'nei mi'ayim. Ma, what's the status of the, of the shechted animal? It says, well, what do you mean? Not tell. If he grabbed it and ran away, he'll listen. They're not here. So what did it even speculate about? El nokav b'nei mi'ayim ma. You saw the, um, the wolf puncturing, like he snatched it with his teeth. Mouse, what's the status of the, uh, of the uh, shechted animal with the punctured intestines? Says the one, well, Nikav, if you saw that he punctured it, so you saw the, <laughs> the, um, the wolf did it. I mean, it wasn't there before, it came now, it's after shechita, it doesn't uh, do anything. What happened was like this. You had a kosher animal, you shechted it, the wolf grabbed the intestines with his teeth, walked away and came back. And I have punctured intestines. When did the puncture happen? Now, so it's okay. What was it before? Shall we be concerned? Perhaps the wolf's teeth were inserted exactly on that very same pre-existing puncture. So it's not attributed to the Wolf at all. It was there before. It was a pre-existing condition which invalidates the animal. Or should we say, no, it's unlikely. Chances are, intestines were, intestines were uninjured, unpunctured. The animal is fine and healthy. It was a properly shechted animal. And now the, the puncture happened through the uh, animal. Omer. Omer so he responds. No, we don't uh, speculate that the uh, wolf just happened to snatch it on the pre-existing uh, puncture. No. The puncture was attributed to the wolf and the, um, the animal was deemed to be kosher. And that's exactly what Afuna's halacha, that once the shechita took place, you assume it's okay unless you can confirm otherwise, but speculation doesn't really get in the way. Ace man, how comes a kosher? Really? So we're not choshish for this uh, suffix to invalidate the animal? We have a similar halacha regarding uh, health matters. We know that if there's evidence that a, a snake 
pecked at uh, certain types of foods which with, uh, with, uh, with uh, high liquid content, fruits, vegetables. We, uh, we don't partake in those foods for concern that the snake may have ingested his venom into those foods. Likewise, regarding liquid that was sitting open, right? Ace, now comes a question from a cash, from a, um, a bright to Sefta. Rod, Sipoham, Nakabateina. He notices a bird pecking at the uh, fig. Va'achbar, or a mouse, Hamanaka, Ravatiham. Pecking on the, on the melons. Return to my base. So now you have pecked fruit. Was it pecked by the bird? Which we had observed, which is okay. He's not a venom uh, spewing creature. Or perhaps the peck occurred exactly on a puncture that had been there before from a snake. In which case you shouldn't eat this uh, food. How likely? How, what are the chances? Guess what? We are concerned about that far, far out. Uh, um, uh, you know, chance. Perhaps it was a makam nekav that the animal is now nekav, and it's forbidden for consumption. So you see that we are going to speculate about this type of, you know, uh, unlikely chance. Amalasi says, no, you can't compare. Mikum Adam is Isurul Sakanta. You're comparing uh, Sakana, Koch Nefesh issues, where we're more machmer, more strict, or more. Uh, we, high, we have higher standards than, than regular routine, you know, kashras issues. Sakana is shiny, Sakana is different. Omale Rava. Says Rava, really? Sakana is dealt differently than other Isurim, than Toma, than Isur. Maish no suffix Sakanta, Luchumra. Why in a case of a suffix Sakana? You take a strict approach. Suffix Isur, not in Luchumra. The same should be applied to Isur. Who wants to do an Isur? If there's any doubt, you keep away. Omale Abai says, no, there's a difference. Le Shani, Ben Isur, Sakanta. You don't think there's a difference between Isur matters, routine, you know, conscious issues, or health matters? I'm going to go, right, there is. But ilu suffolk tumma bishis aram is fake a tarf. There's a situation where a person may have encountered tumma in a public area. We assume the best, he's considered tar. That's the Allah. We ilu suffolk mayim megulun asur. But if you have water sitting out in the open, exposed, unattended, unmonitored, you don't touch it for concern that it was tainted by a snake. So you see the difference between sakana, which is held to a higher standard than just plain, uh, you know, other research. Armelie says, no. That's not any indication that uh, Toma is dealt with less severely than, than Sakana. It's based on a halacha. How do we even know that when there's a, a suffix regarding Toma, um, we have to deal with it as, that's from Saita. The woman deviated, she went into concealment with this person and was concerned that perhaps there was some sort of, some sort of sin and there was a tumma and she's forbidden to her husband unless it's, you know, the matter is clarified. So the concept that we have to be concerned about a suffolk tumma is learned from Saita. Now by Saita, you've got to follow the precedent, the model of Saita, which is a place of, of yichud, a place of hiding, a place of concealment. So we learned that only a suffolk tumma which occurs in that type of circumstance has to be dealt with l'chumra. But out in the public, out in the open, suffolk of, of tumma is tar. So there, there's a special formula. You have to follow that formula. It's not any indication at all that um, that we, we treat tumma any less than, than sakana. We learned from the soita. The whole concept of suffolk tumma is from soita, so... Uh, we have to be. We have to model these circumstances. The soita, ma soita, just like by the soita. It's only b'rishus hayoch in a private area. Af tumah b'rishus yoch. Likewise, an, uh, an uncertainty regarding tumah is dealt with severely only when it's in b'rishus hayoch. Not in the street. Not b'rishus harab. So you can't really, um, you know, prove anything in terms of comparing tumah to sakana. Uh, no, the. Um, the Allah of Tum is very different than everything else. Most of our, our Simi, says our Simi, uh, yeah, I'm going to actually ask on Rav, meaning I'm going to seek to prove that uh, the Chacham were more uh, strict when it comes to matters of health of Sakon. Sheretz bifi chulda. Chulda mahalecha zagab kikusel shuma. You have a Sheretz, a dead creature which is metame, which imparts Tumah. That a chulda is clutching in his mouth. 
Okay, and the rat is running around. Malechas al gabi kikushal shum on the truma loaves of bread. We're not sure whether the uh, sheriff actually came into contact with the loaves or not. Suffolk naga maybe it touched. Suffolk naga maybe it didn't touch. Sveikai tar. We say since we don't know what's tar. So we see that we're lenient when it comes to these matters, but not when it comes to matters of sakana, of danger. Vilu Safik, Mayan Begulim, there's water open and exposed, and we don't know whether it was tainted by a snake, that's Asur, so you see, sakana is worse. No, once again, we can differentiate. Again, you're talking about a tumma question, did it touch the, the bread? Again, that has to be derived from Saita. Go back to the source. And you'll see it doesn't apply in this case. Ma Saita Dovashish, but Das Lishoil. What's unique about the Saita? It involves people. She's a person who has intelligence. Yesh ba daas lishol. She has daas. She can. She can be interviewed. She can be asked. She can be. She can be asked to verify what happened. So halacha is only one with intelligence is susceptible to these halacha of suffik tuma tami. Afalcha nami here as well. You can only compare. You can only equate a scenario which features this quality of davar she yesh ba daas lishol. So yeah, if a person is involved in tuma, a suffix tuma, we uh, were strict, but not a cholda, <laughs> which has no intelligence. So there's no halach of suffix tuma tuma. Amr Rashi Tashma, I'll prove. Sakana is held to a higher plane than routine kashras issues. Tzleichis, or tuma issues. Tzleichis, shenicha makula. So this is a, a container with fresh spring water intended for the paraduma use which is deemed very fragile, very delicate, and we have very, very high standards. Very easy to make a tummy. Shini Chumaguli left it open, exposed without a lid. It comes back 10 minutes later, it's covered. Tmeya, the water is now unsuitable. It's tummy. What do you mean, why is it tummy? We're concerned, Shani Oymer, we have a concern. Adam Tommy, Nichlas Hashem, I mean, who covers things? Human beings, with intelligence. So we assume that a person who might have been Tommy, I mean, most people are tar, but like we said, regarding Paraduma waters, we're very machmer. We, uh, <laughs> we assume the worst. Worst case scenario, that it was a person who was personally Tommy, who got involved and touched this and made a Tommy. Adam Tommy, Nichlas Hashem, Now, let's do the opposite. Nichlas Hashem, Bamatz Megula. He left the container covered with a lid. Comes back, it's uncovered. Now, that's something that even an animal could have done. So, yeah, we don't have to assume that it was a person. We attribute it to an animal. Now, does the animal invalidate the water? It depends. It's the type of animal that spits back into the water when he drinks. And that mixture now is puzzle, right? So, it depends. If it's accessible to a rat, which sort of uh, spits back while it's drinking, or a snake, which also has that... Uh, practice according to one sheet of the Rimgul meal. So then you know there's a uh, legal uh, you know substance in this water. Ashir but Tabalila was sitting out at night and a dew had uh, landed on it, so it's now mixed with non spring water. Psula, then you can't use it for the paradum. It's not tummy. Because we don't attribute it to a, a person like in the first case. Why is it that in this case we're not concerned about it having encountered a person who's tummy? Okay, so one Yudam Al. Because as we explained, it's darken shashratzim legalis and darken lechasis. It's customary for shratzim for creatures to come and knock off lids to access the content, access the water. So we attribute it to them, and not to a, a person who was tummy. As opposed to the first case in the other brayso where it's exposed and now covered, that has to be a person with intelligence, right? And darken lechasis. So we see that we're lenient in matters of tuma. We attribute it to an animal, not to a person. In the, in the second case, vilu savik ma'im begul masur. But again, back to the regal halach of Gilui, right? You leave water out in the open, we, uh, we fear the worst. That perhaps a snake came and drank. So you see, then matters of Sakana, we don't take chances. Shema Mino, we prove from here. Chamira, Sakanta, Misura, Shema Mino, that's it, that slams the lid. <laughs> that Sakana is considered more severe than Isser, Shema Mino. Not awesome, okay, just to finish up this topic. So we speak about exposed liquids being, you know, Susceptible to uh, to uh, you know snake venom. Gimel, non hassam. We have a mission in Mesechus Trumas. Gimel, mashkin asurim shem gilei. The snakes evidently uh, have a liking for the following three types of liquids, and they're asur if they leave them open. Mayim, v'yain v'chalav, water, wine, and milk. By the way, uh, nowadays the prevalent custom is not to be makbid on on gilei because 
for the most part, we live in populated urban areas where there are no uh, commonly uh, commonly found, you know, snakes and you know. Um, but interestingly, some some sheets like the Vilna Goyen were very machmer because he held that even a, a situation w- which which may have changed, but since it was established as an edict, as a takon, as a gzera by the Chazal, by the Chachamim years ago, you know, there are very ma- many layers to these takonis. Some that we understand, the more simple, uh, you know, concerns as we learn it. But there are a lot of hidden uh, layers as well, which are based on you know hidden portions of the Torah. So he held on to all those takonis, even nowadays where you know the. Um, Physical circumstance may have changed, so he was very makbar on gilui to always, you know, make sure things are covered, not exposed. But all agree that if you're out in the country in a place where there are, you know, snakes and things commonly found, you have to ensure that things are covered and properly protected from uh, from these uh, visitors. Okay, become a yeshu v'yasur. Now, how how long do you leave it open? And it's a problem. A second, I mean, it got to give enough time for the kadei shiyeti harachash, the slitherer, the the uh, sneaky snake. Give him enough time. To slither out, mimakim kara from very close by. We used to have a drink. But kama mimakim kara, how close by? I mean, let's get a you know precise uh, you know uh, number here. Amar abiyutzak beder avida kadeshi yetsi metachas oizna kli. We used to perhaps the uh, snake is hiding right behind, behind, underneath the handle, hiding right there. If you left it out enough, uh, with enough time for the snake to slither out from there, take a drink, then you're in trouble. Ask the gemara. Well. Then you would notice him. Let's say it takes him three seconds to slither into the thing and start drinking. And then, if it happened, you would see him right there. Yishte, just a drink. Hakachazli sees it, and if he doesn't see it, apparently it didn't happen. Oh, el yishte v'yachsel You have to add a little more time to let him get back, sneak back home into his hole. So let's say it takes ten seconds for him to come out, have a drink, and go back. So under ten seconds, you're safe. Otherwise, spill it out. Okay, so we uh, discussed the Talmud Chacham being proficient in all kinds of. All kinds of handy uh, things, shchita, mila, uh, some say kesha shalt filin, etc., etc. Sheva brachas, right? We spoke about a shaykh certainly having to know, be a proficient in the halachis, um, in addition to having the, you know the hands-on, you know, uh, experience. Uh, we spoke about the um, requirement to check the simonim to ensure that they were properly cut. Otherwise, the animal is forbidden, whether it has tumor or not, that was dependent on the machlekes. We had an interesting chiddush from Rav Huna, there was a cheskas iser during the lifetime, unless uh, it was changed to a proper shechita. But once the shechita took place, even though there was a, some sort of issue that occurred later, we hope for the best, because that has a cheskas heter, versus matters of sakana, where we're momachmer, and there even a slight chance, um, requires us to keep away, to protect our, 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 our guf, so, even for a slight chance. All the best to you, and that's the